What's up, Buffalo fans? Thank you for tuning in today. Once again, the center of the sports universe is going to be in Boulder, Colorado. And today, I've got something special for you. In fact, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. A little birdie told me something unexpected about this Colorado versus USC game. Specifically, they told me why USC should fear these Buffaloes. And I'm not going to lie, I was skeptical at first. But after hearing them out, I think they're right. So we'll get to that in just a second. But also, you're going to want to stick around until the end because we're going to do a deep dive into the game, and then I'm going to give you my pick for the game. So kick back, put your feet up, and join with Jay-Z and LeBron in the prime time for College Football VIP Club. All right, first up, we're going to talk about why USC should fear Colorado. There's a famous line from the movie The Watchmen where this character, Roshark, is put in a prison full of the worst prisoners many of whom he is responsible for locking up. Well, they all start talking crap about him, and they start telling him what they're planning to do to him. But he didn't respond how they expected. He looks them dead in the eye and tells them, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And that's where I think this Colorado Buffaloes team is. And that's what the little birdie told me. There's an old saying, fear the man who has nothing to lose, for he who has nothing left fears nothing. And that's what the little birdie told me. USC better watch out because this Colorado Buffaloes team has nothing to lose. They've already lost their perfect season. And you can't predict what someone will do when they have nothing to lose. You can't underestimate somebody who has nothing left to lose. Someone with nothing to lose can do things that defy the laws of nature. And right now, Coach Prime's Colorado Buffaloes team has nothing left. To lose. They've already accomplished far more than most of the world expected them to. And they're already playing with house money. On the other side, USC has plenty to lose. USC can lose their playoffs. USC can lose their Heisman. But Coach Prime has spent all week reminding his team that they have nothing to lose this weekend. And that Colorado must reach down deep and summon on a new level that USC is not ready for. A new level that can only be born from desperation. And someone staring into the darkness and not being fearful, but smiling peacefully with nothing to lose. Last week, Oregon beat Colorado 42-6, to and Dan Lanning earned a statement win to open up Pac-12 play. And he exposed some weaknesses in Colorado as a team, and they look like they still may be a ways away from being a contender in conference play. But Deion Sanders has held himself and his team accountable for the lackluster performance, and they can't allow themselves to dwell on the loss. After all, there's another conference blue blood that's coming to Boulder, but they're also looking for their next conference win. Despite a lackluster performance to open up Pac-12 play, the Trojans are ranked eighth in the AP poll, and they remain the odds-on team expected to win the conference this season. And they look like they're headed for the college football playoff with Lincoln Riley, one of the great offensive minds in the sport. He's taken a similar approach to Coach Prime in shopping the transfer portal and shaping USC back into the West Coast powerhouse that it historically has been. This is a dangerous squad that's looking to squash critics who have questioned the defensive performance thus far of the Trojans. But Colorado's dangerous as well, and they're loaded with offensive talent even after their disappointing road loss. So what are USC's strengths, and what are their weaknesses, and how does that stack up against Colorado this weekend? Well, we're going to break it all down for you because USC's coming to town. Will they get embarrassed by the Buffaloes? Will they do the embarrassing? Will Colorado rise back up after their tough outing against Oregon? Let's try and dive into it for you now. Okay, let's look at USC strengths first of all. Uh, Offense, offense, offense. This is the hallmark of any Lincoln-Riley squad. It's their offensive production. This Trojan team is no different. They lead the nation in several categories heading into this road trip into Boulder. USC leads the nation in scoring offense, putting up 55 points a game. Um, Their average on rushing is phenomenal. They're top 30-ish in the nation. They get about 192 yards a game, while the passing offense is really where they're stellar. Third nationally at 377 yards a game through the air. 
Their total offensive production, when you put those two together, is also third in the country at 569 yards a game. They convert red zone at 95% a clip, and that's good for 12th in the nation. The turnover margin per game is at one, which is 17th in the country. So they take care of the ball, they protect the ball, and they score a lot. They rack up a lot of yards. What I'm trying to tell you is that the Trojans can put points up in a variety of ways. Even if they're not the most effective in the run game, you need playmakers to counter the skill position that USC boasts. Unfortunately for Colorado, their defense hasn't shown that it can match up well against high-powered offenses yet. You probably are going to need to outscore the Trojans in a shootout and then make some key defensive plays like they did against TCU, Colorado State, and others. This game has all the makings of a high-profile, electric, atmosphere-type shootout. I think it's something that Buffs fans will enjoy immensely if it happens in Boulder tomorrow. For everything USC is great on offense, though, let's look at some of their weaknesses. Their glaring weakness is defense. The Trojans' scoring defense ranks 45th in the nation this year. Uh, They allow 20 points per game on average. However, the stats play out even worse than that. The rushing defense is allowing about 136 yards a game, and passing, they're giving up 228. That's 77th and 70th nationally. They're not great on defense. In fact, they're bottom half of the country. It gets even worse for USC as the Trojans are allowing opponents to score in red zone appearances 88.89% of the time. That's 101st out of 133 teams. They have a lot of penalties. They get about eight and a half a game, which is good for 124th in the country. And the defense allows about five and a half yards per play, which is not good. It's about 60th in the nation. That tells me the Trojans have a bit of a problem going on on the field on defense. And even if the opponents aren't necessarily capitalizing with touchdowns in the red zone based on your poor per points performance, the opponents that USC has faced this season aren't exactly known for their offenses either. San Jose State was able to put up 28 points on this USC team, but even Arizona State held by first-year head coach Kenny Dillingham, was also able to put up 28 points. That was the most points this season that the Sun Devils have scored, and that was in Southern Cal. This same ASU squad was shut out the week before by Fresno State at home. Now, Colorado is going to be the best team that USC has faced on the season so far. I don't expect that Coach Prime will have his squad underprepared for the Trojans, especially after getting embarrassed on national television last week against Oregon. He'll want this statement win in the conference, and he has the weapons on offense to give USC fits on Saturday. It just comes down to whether or not they get that offense rolling and whether or not they can keep pace with USC in a shootout. Let's get to my prediction in just a moment. But first, we continue to tell you guys about the Prize Picks app. And over a hundred of you have already signed up. Not all of you have deposited, but several of you have signed up. If you haven't deposited this weekend, go play. It's a ton of fun. You can make some money with us. I know you guys all like having action on the games, whether it's NFL or college. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy game where you select entries on player projections. So if Shador is at 275 passing yards, you can take the more. You could pair him with Xavier Weaver, who might be at 85 passing yards, and you take the more on both of them. If they both hit, you win. You can use our code BUFFS, that's BUFFS, at checkout for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, hundreds of you guys have signed up. Not everyone's deposited. I'm not giving you a hard time, but go put a little bit in there. Make a little coin with us this weekend. Prize Picks is a great way to have action on the games in states like Florida, Texas, California, Georgia, and others. Over 70% of the U.S. Use our code BUFFS to get a 100% deposit match up to $100. All right. It's prediction time, guys. Let's get into it. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I was honest last week about the Oregon game, and that caused a lot of people to have hissy fits down in the comments, which I kind of enjoyed. (laughs) But you guys forgive me. I know that because you've listened to me, and I told you not to bet that game, and hopefully you listened there. You may not have thanked me, but your wallet thanked me if you did listen to that advice. And I'm not going to say I told you so, But it's a lot easier to watch your favorite team lose with your money still in your pocket. Now, as for this USC game Saturday, I think I'm going to have to tell you the same thing as last week. 
Don't bet this game. Do not put money on it. Do not lay down a fat chunk of bills. If I'm wrong on that, you guys can like me up in the comments on Sunday afternoon. But you know me. And you guys have gotten to know me over the last six or seven months. And I think you know this. I'm not picking against Coach Prime. I'm not betting against Coach Prime. Um, I'm not about to pick USC to win this game. I told you, I think the Buffaloes have nothing to lose. I think that they have everything to gain. I think all of the pressure is on USC last week. I think the worst thing that could have happened for USC last week was Oregon embarrassing us. I think that that's trouble brewing for Southern Cal. And Southern Cal might win this game nine out of 10 times. There is no doubt about it. They are one of the best teams in college football. It's not bold to predict them. When you watch other shows, when you watch some of the national guys talk, picking Southern Cal is the smart move. I get it. They're a huge favorite. And Southern Cal would probably be anyone in the country save like three or four teams. But again, I think you guys know me well enough to know that I'm not picking against Coach Prime. The Buffs have nothing to lose, and I have nothing to lose. I'm not betting on the game. Uh, I'm not putting money on this. But in my heart of hearts, I'll ride with Deion Sanders. And if I'm wrong, I'd rather be wrong riding with Coach Prime than right riding without him. That said, I think they reach deep down and pull out a gutsy last-second win. This game is going to be electric. You guys remember the TCU game? You remember the Colorado State game? That's what this could look like. There are going to be superstars all over the stadium. And Coach Prime has his guys ready. Last week was the shell shocking that they needed. Coach Prime shows up. The team shows up. The stars show up. And they show out. Colorado wins last second, 42-41. to 41. If I'm wrong on Sunday, you guys can come after me then. Don't put money on it. But that is our pick for this weekend's game. Thank you guys for watching. If you missed yesterday's video about the truth that the media is hiding from Colorado fans, you can check that out by clicking right here.